Oh, these Bengals receivers talking spicy. Yeah, this feels like a dream. So YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraving here with another video and in this video the big three the trio of NFL wide receivers that set the world on fire last year and made it all the way to the Super Bowl and then we know what happened then but still they made it and nobody else did and they were a huge a huge part of all of the Bengals success Jamar Chase T Higgins and Tyler Boyd, uh, they were on the pivot. And shout out to the pivot, by the way. I love what they do over there. Shout out to Ryan Clark and, and Channing and, and, and Fred. T. Anyway, they were on the pivot. Um, and they had some very interesting things to say. And you know what? Just roll the clip. Or y'all sit on the sideline, y'all bombing on people. You like, this shit's actually easy. Nah, word, yeah. <laughs> All the time, you know what I'm saying? Ravens game. Ravens game, Chiefs game. All the time. We're, we're on the side, like, they can't double all of us. Right. Well, somebody got to go out, so that's how we look at it, you know what I'm saying? If they double, you know, one or two of us, next person man up. As you know, it's always more out there, so that's how we go. So Ryan Clark, a former Pittsburgh Steeler, by the way, who has been doing an excellent job as an analyst and on-air talent. He is phenomenal at what he does. And I, I was so glad that uh that Channing uh and Fred that they linked up with him uh to do the pivot but anyway uh Ryan Clark uh he had them on uh his podcast his platform his channel his everything uh with the pivot and he was asking the question so do, do y'all ever just sit there and just feel like man like this is easy when y'all bombing them and whatnot and T Higgins was like yeah we do we do uh, and then Tyler Boyd, he uh, they brought up the the Ravens game, and Jamal Chase was like, yeah, Ravens game. And then, um, <laughs> and then they brought up the Chiefs game too, and they went where well, they went off, uh, and, and they did, they did. And now I know uh, most people, or, or at least most Ravens fans, are thinking, man, like, hey, context is important because it is. It is extremely important because we know in that second Ravens game that was. 525 Burrow, where I, I said that, hey, I, I got to call him 500 Burrow from now on uh, until the Ravens actually stop him because he went off. And the receivers, they went off. And you know what? Let's just look at I know it's, we don't want to revisit it, but let's just look at the numbers. T. Higgins, <laughs> he had 12 catches for 194 yards. 12 catches for 194 yards and two touchdowns. Jamar Chase had seven catches for 125 yards. Tyler Boyd had three catches for 85 yards and a touchdown. So all three of them, the big three, they went off through the air. Now, who are they going up against? It was not no Marlon Humphrey. It was not no Marcus Peters. It was not no Anthony Avery. You know, honestly, I don't even remember half the corners that we had out there. It might have been Robert Jackson. Uh, I think maybe Kevon Seymour, maybe Worley was out there. I don't even remember half the guys that was out there because it. So many of the Ravens players were injured. They were hitting, injured. They were hurt. Ravens ain't had starters out there. They were playing with the the backups, backups, backups. Not even the backups. Not not even the backups, back with the backups, backups, backups. It was rough. It was so rough. But the Bengals. They ain't. They don't care about that, and nor should they. That the, if the, the all you gotta do is play the team that's in front of you. That's all you can do. If the Ravens were in the same situation, they they just gotta play the team that's in front of them. Whether the other team got all their starters or not, you got to do what you got to do. But then, this is where it gets very very, very interesting. Knowing that the team didn't have the starters, and you still talking spicy like this. Ooh. That's the kicker right there. But I love it because, reason being, if they whooped you, they threw for 525 yards. They caught 525 receiving yards on your defense when everybody was not healthy. All right, cool. No problem. They, they did it. Now, 
show them what they won't do when you are healthy. That's it. That's, that's all you got to do. Show them what they won't do. Because they talking. And, hey, they, this obviously wasn't the only game that they went off for. Because, again, we got to go back a little bit. Because we got to go back to the game where Marlon Humphrey actually did play. And when they did have a little more health in the secondary. Um, and, and that game, Jamar Chase, because he, he had Marlon Humphrey like spinning around in circles. <laughs> oh, Marlon, you okay, man? I felt so bad. It, it was rough. It, it was rough. It was always a rough game. But anyway, uh, Jamar Chase in the first game where Ravens had a little more health. Uh, Jamar Chase, he had eight catches for 201 yards and a touchdown. That's a game where just no, nobody wanted to tackle. No, no, nobody wanted to tackle him. C.J. Uzama, he had three catches for 91 yards and two touchdowns. I remember one of them. He was just wide open. Wide open. I'm looking around like, what? And then there was another one where he ran over somebody on his way to the end zone. And I just, uh, yeah. T. Higgins in that game, he had seven catches for 62 yards. Tyler Boyd in that game had four catches for 39 yards. So you see, more starters played in that game. Um, but the Ravens, so more starters played in that game for the Ravens, I mean, excuse me. Uh, and the, the bank, well, besides Jamar Chase, I mean, they still got this. They still got this. But Ravens, it's, it's up to them to, to shut the Bengals wide receivers up and shut them down. I mean, they over here talk, oh, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, we remember Ravens and Chiefs. Okay, yeah, they should remember that because those games, especially against the Ravens, that's where a chunk of their yards for the entire season came from. They could have probably made the Pro Bowl based off of all those games alone. And they did speak facts in there, too, when they said, all right, you can't double all of us. Who are you going to double? Because if you double this guy or then you double these two guys, then this other guy could go off. You decide you want to bracket coverage him and you want to. OK, well, we still got him. And, and that is such a, a beautiful formula. And on the flip side, that's what I'm hoping the Ravens end up doing and the Ravens end up having. And just to sort of change the direction of this conversation, that has been one of the biggest reasons that I've wanted the Ravens to really go in at the receiver position. Because you can never have enough playmakers. You can never have enough talent. You, you can never because it makes your quarterback's job that much easier. Look at Joe Burrow. Look at Joe, Joe Burrow. They, they had like, Ravens offensive line was bad. Ooh they, ooh, they were bad. But Bengals offensive line was even worse than Ravens offensive line last year. Think about, like, think about that. Because we, as Ravens said, we know how bad the Ravens offensive line was last year. It was terrible. But the Bengals was even worse. And they made it all the way to the Super Bowl with that terrible offensive line. And they were a play away, a play away from being successful in the Super Bowl with that bad offensive line. But what was the big reason for that? The wide receivers making Joe Burrow's job so much easier. He could throw a slant. He could throw like an eight-yard slant to Jamar Chase. And I mean, we as Ravens fans, we saw it firsthand, especially in that first game. There was like, it, it, I think it was actually an eight-yard slant to Jamar Chase. Marlon Humphrey go to tackle, oh, miss. Somebody else go to tackle, oh, they miss. Boom. End up being, what, 50, 60-yard touchdown? Just like that. All Joe Burrow had to do was throw an eight-yard slant. That's all he had to do. But since he has elite talent at the wide receiver position, that made his job that much easier. That much easier. There was another play. It was in the second game because where, where T. Higgins was going off. There was some times where he, Joe Burrow just, he just threw it up. It looked like he was just having fun out there. He just threw it up. Threw it up. And T. Higgins, it, it looked like T. Higgins like was on like a, a stepping stone, step, a, a steps or something, and he's just walking up. And it's like, oh, you know what? Let me, let me get on these steps. Caught the ball. And okay, I'll come back down there. He just mossed the dude. But when you have that elite talent, it makes your job easy as a quarterback. So, again, that is one of the reasons and the examples of why. That's why I wanted the Ravens to do the same thing for Lamar Jackson. But anyway, back to the original, what we were originally talking about. It's up to Ravens defense. First, to, to, to get healthy and stay healthy, <laughs> first and foremost. But it, it's up to them to really, hey, you want to shut them up? Words ain't going to do nothing. It's all about that action. 
It's all about that action. So the Ravens will have at least two times this year to show like, hey, what happened last season? Yeah, great job. It was cool and all. But y'all going to know what's up this year. Yeah, this feels like a dream. Right and grave it.